Hello everyone. In uh, previous video, we understood about two quantum numbers of isospin and third component of isospin. So in today's video, we are going to understand about the rest of the nuclear quantum numbers. So let's start by first checking whether your homework that I had given in the previous video is correct or not. I told you to derive isospin and third component of isospin for hyperons. You can check whether your answers were correct in the following chart. So in the chart, you see, we already derived le for leptons, we derived I and I3. Similarly, we derived it for mesons. These are nothing but the values for I and I3. And you were told to derive the value of uh, I and I3 for baryons. So these are the values for baryons. These are the values of uh, isospin I. And these are the values of third component of isospin I3. Check whether the values that you derived are correct or not. And let's move on towards our next quantum number, which is baryon number. So if you check your elementary particles chart, you notice that there is a section of baryons. All the particles that come under this branch of baryons, that is nucleons and hyperons, all of them would have baryon number as one. So all the particles that you see in this section will have baryon number one. And all the remaining particles, that is leptons, mesons and photons, would have baryon number zero. It's as simple as that. Just feed in the data that we just understood in the chart that you made. Thus we see that baryon number for leptons and mesons would be zero. On the other hand, the baryon number for baryons would be plus one. The next quantum number that we'll understand is lepton number. As the name suggests, Similar in similar fashion to baryons, leptons only and only leptons would have lepton number to be positive one. So all the leptons that you see here, that is electron, muon, tau on, and neutrinos, would have lepton number plus one. On the on the other hand, the lepton number for mesons and baryons would be of course zero. So the next concept or next nuclear quantum number that we are going to study is strangeness. But before we understand strangeness, we need to understand Gelman-Nishijima relation. So what is Gelman-Nishijima relation? It is a relation that connects charge Q of a particle with I3, that is third component of isospin, baryon number and strangeness. As we saw, I3, Q and B, we have already derived in our previous videos. So we can just put in the values of these three components and find out the unknown component, which is S. Or strangeness. So we can use this Gelman Nishijima relation to find out about strangeness of particles. So to understand strangeness, let's take an example. So let's start with example of uh, pi positive, that is the positive pi on particle, pi meson particle. So if you look at pi meson, this is nothing but our Gelman Nishijima relation. In this, we can just put the values of Q, I3, and B. So if you look at the chart, I3, that is third component of isospin for pi meson happens to be plus 1. We just put in the value. So we put I3 equal to plus 1. Similarly, baryon number for pi meson happens to be 0. We put in this value of baryon number B. And of course the charge, since it is a pi positive particle, positive means Q, that is charge would be positive 1. We just enter all these three values in the Gelman Nishijima relation. We get plus one equal to plus one plus half into zero plus half into s. We just put all the three values of I3, B, and Q in the Gelman Nishijima relation. Thus, solving for s, we get s equal to zero. Thus, we can say that pi positive, that is positive pi on or pi meson, has strangeness number equal to zero. That is, it is a non strange particle. Let's take two more examples. I hope you have noted down all the values that we have found out for I3, B and I in our previous videos. Just note down the chart that we have already created and by pausing the video in the previous slides. And after you do that, let's start with the derivation of strangeness for omega minus. So for omega minus, if you look at the chart that I showed for all the values of I, I3, B and L, we, we see the charge for omega minus, since it's a minus particle, we get Q equal to minus 1. If you look at the chart, I3 equal to 0. 
and baryon number since it is a baryon since omega minus or omega hyperon is a baryon we get b equal to plus 1 just put all the three values in the gelman nishijima relation we get minus 1 equal to 0 plus half into 1 plus half into s since charge is minus 1 i3 happens to be 0 and baryon number is 1 so just by solving for s we get strangeness we get s equal to minus 1 minus half into 2 which happens to be minus 3 by 2 into 2 if we cancel out the twos we get strangeness equal to minus 3 for omega hyperon so let's solve for proton next so proton as we know charge on proton is positive 1 i3 for proton happens to be plus 1 as we previously derived in our previous video for i and i3 and baryon since p is a baryon since p is a nucleon which happens to lie under the baryon branch we get baryon number equal to plus 1 put all the three values in the gelman nishijima relation put q equal to plus 1 i3 equal to plus half b equal to 1 we get value for s equal to 1 minus half minus half which is 1 minus 1 into 2 so we get s equal to 0 so we can say that proton is a non strange particle in similar fashion to what we saw for pi meson pa positive pi meson so i hope by considering these three example you must have understood the original procedure for finding out strangeness value for different elementary particles so homework for today would be finding out the strangeness for different remaining elementary particles in your chart Let's con consider the next and the last quantum number for nuclear particles, which is intrinsic spin. Now, intrinsic spin should not be confused with iso spin or isobaric spin. So, intrinsic spin. To consider int intrinsic spin, just look at this elementary particles chart. You see that elementary particles are divided or classified into fermions and bosons. So, we should understand that fermions would have always have half integral spins. intrinsic spins on the other hand bosons would have only zero or one spin so if we put the values of spin for all these particle we find out that spin for all the leptons spin for all the nucleons and all the hyperons happens to be plus half so spin for all the fermions would be plus half except for omega hyperon which has 3 by 2 spin so the reason behind the 3 by 2 spin of uh, omega is of course the quark model if you want to cover uh, if you want me to cover quark model in one of my videos just write down in comments and of course if you look at the bosons all the bosons would have zero or one spin so as you look at the bosons around here all the mesons that is all of these particles would have zero intrinsic spin so all of these would have zero intrinsic spin on the other hand photon or graviton uh, gravitons have intrinsic spin of 1 just feed in all these values for spin in the chart that we made so i just put in all the values of spin or intrinsic spin in our chart do not confuse the values of strangeness with spin these are the values for spins of the particles so as we know leptons are fermions so they have one half spins mesons are bosons so they have zero spin if you just look at your elementary particle chart and baryons which are again fermions have one half spin except for omega minus which has 3 by 2 spin so this is how the chart for all the elementary particles and the respective nuclear quantum number looks pause the video and note the whole chart down and now we'll solve the question that we discussed in our original video for elementary particles so when we started with the discussion of the topic of elementary particles this was the question that we were trying to solve now all the elements related to this problem have been solved we can consider the solution of this problem so look at the problem this is the equation that you see in the problem pi positive plus n that gives k not plus p we have to see this relation for which of the quantum numbers this relation is not conserved so let's see for charge first we see pi positive so positive one charge neutron neutral so it has zero charge k not so again charge is zero and for proton charge is one 
since that there is positive one charge on both sides of the relation we get that charge is conserved next we go on to baryon number since since pi positive is a baryon we get b equal to 0 neutron we get baryon again baryon number is 1 even for k it since it is a meson we get baryon number 0 and for proton we get baryon number 1 again one on both the sides we say baryon number is conserved if you look at strangeness however strangeness if you check the chart that you noted down strangeness for pi positive happens to be 0 for neutron strangeness is 0 For kaon strangeness is minus one, and for proton it is zero. Since this minus one goes unbalanced on the LHS, we say that this relation or this reaction is not conserved under the laws of conservation of strangeness. And next is I three. Even I three, we see that I three on the RHS is positive one and minus half, and on LHS I three happens to be minus half and plus half. since on the lhs we get 0 on and on the rhs we get 1/2 half, -1 uh, we get 1/2 so i3 is not conserved on lhs and rhs of the reaction thus we say this reaction is not conserved under strangeness and i3 if you look at the question this is nothing but our option d so we can say that this nuclear reaction is invalid under the laws of conservation of strangeness and third component of isospin that is i3